He's among our favorites here on the show. Uh, has a Heritage Restaurant there in uh, Fort Lauderdale. It's red hot. It's smoking hot. Reno Serbone uh, joins us here on the show, our, our hockey uh, analyst. What is it that uh, has these franchises uh, turning on Gerard Gallant, no matter what level of success he has? Uh, now we're yeah. no longer coaching, but, I mean, it, it was three times he was doing well with the Panthers. They threw him off the team bus uh, in a snow oh. dip in Saskatchewan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, uh, he, he was, was doing rough. great with the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, and they, uh, you know, sent him out to the Bunny Rents here and said, hey, take one up the ass, uh, Gerard. Yeah. You're <laughs> yeah. yeah doing well with the Rangers, <laughs> and you wouldn't even sell him a knish on the street corner after a couple of years of uh, what looked like pretty successful hockey. But what is it about that guy? Do you know anything uh, on uh, Gerard Gallant? Yeah. He was another one. You, you know, it's funny. First off, look, as a Panther fan, that shit that, you know, that happened with him, that he got thrown off the plane or bus, was, yeah. that, was, that was the worst thing ever. If I were him, I would have waited for the whole front office to be like in the building and I would have lit it on fire. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 that's bullshit. Right? They had that's, younger throwing his duffel bag out the window as they left him literally like in a snow drip somewhere. Yeah, like an orphan. It was fucking <laughs> terrible, man. It was absolutely, it was they gave absolutely him cab first. You know I'm the first guy, man. If I got a problem with you, yeah. I'll pack your shit for you and I'll, yes. I'll, I'll throw it at you <laughs> as I make the whole team just like in it. The time. Wake up with Defo, joined by Luby. Welcome to the Defo Show. <laughs> Reno, a classic uh, yesterday. Reno Serbone uh, on hockey. Hey, very impressive. Uh, I didn't realize that he knew the league as well as he does, Luby. But well, we were looking for somebody to fill that role, and, and we knew that uh, with, with the colorful approach that Reno has to virtually everything that uh, he would be great, especially since uh, we, we were kind of selling the fact that, you know, he, he had credibility because he was the brother-in-law of Roberto Luongo, but that doesn't necessarily no, no, no. carry a ton of weight in, in terms of hockey knowledge. Uh, you mean, could it marry- doesn't mean you'll be, in, you'll know, like, that's the thing. It's not that he know, knew the game Yeah, where he throws us for a loop is when he knows the game now. It's like, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize he was following it that closely. Who does, man? Who, who could name players on like the Carolina Hurricanes? Nobody. Well, the coaches thing is the thing that, yeah. thing that like back in the day, every sport you would know, if not all the coaches, at least have a clue. Now, literally, yes. I don't know the NFL coaches on most teams. I definitely don't know baseball coaches. I, it's, I've never even heard of most of the guys. The NBA, they'll show a coach. I'm like, that's who's coaching the magic. And yes. Andy Chell. Um, I was like, I think Brindamore's there. He's like, yeah, Robbie Brindamore. I'm like, good for fucking you. <laughs> I can picture Brindamore, and yet it doesn't always, uh, you know, match up the association of name to image. Exactly. But, uh, you can picture Brindamore, and uh, he has a very distinct look, as a lot of hockey coaches do. Uh, they really do. I, I I was watching the game the other night, with, uh, and, of course, the Panthers played again. Uh, we had just said, don't worry about a thing well, with the Florida Panthers, and they lose to the lowly Montreal Canadiens on the road. Uh, that game uh, was 2-1 Panthers, became 3-2 Montreal, uh, and they open up the third period. You thought, all right, uh, Panthers will scamper back into this one, come away with a victory, uh, at least get a point, force the thing into overtime and a shootout. And uh, sure enough, uh, they ended up giving up a couple of quick goals there to open up the third period and, and lost again, Luby. I told you. They They're lost not- again. I'm not concerned, but I don't like – look, <laughs> a lot of why they were good is Bobrovsky and their goaltending – Played vastly better than it had last year. Yeah. This last stretch, it has not. It, their no. defense, which had stepped up and was just fucking murdering people to go along with their offense, is now just letting teams get in there, and their goaltending looks like it looked in the past. And I believe Solars was in the pipes last night. I don't want to say whoever that. Whoever it is, either, both yeah. of them. Both of them were sh- have been really strong all season, and both of them have struggled. I, okay, look, maybe not struggle, but they're not playing the way they were playing, and They've now lost four or five, and these are all game winnable games. Like the Rangers, the Bruins, great teams. They were in those games. They had leads in those games. Um, now the Canadians, the Maple Leafs, same thing. In those games, I think had leads or were within a goal most of the game. Lost those games. These are games that. Well, all- the Leafs, they were way down. They were down five one. They got the annihilated, and then they came back. You know, and made it interesting. But all the other games, they either were within a goal or had leads most of the games. These are games they were winning all year, and yes. that, the thing is. It's fine, team struggle, but you don't want your struggles like what is it? The playoffs must be within a week or so. They're always right with the NBA. Like you don't want to struggle into the playoffs. Like no. that's not what you want. Bad like, time that, to fall apart. Last year, that's the thing. Is remember they almost didn't make the playoffs, and then yes. in math, but they started playing better, and that sort of propelled them into the playoffs. You don't want the opposite this year. Like that, that's that's not what you want. 
Uh, many times we've seen this, especially in the NHL. There's one team that seems improbable. That's why you see upsets in the first round of the eight seed beating the one yep. seed. Yep. Uh, which, uh, you know, ha- happened. Uh, what, were the Panthers the eight seed uh, last year? Didn't they have to Obviously go into Boston? Was fucking weird, but they ended up playing the team with the best record. Yes, so they ended up playing. Uh, Boston was a, what, were they a first round or second round uh, last first year? First round. Oh, okay. Down. Weren't they down like 3 yeah. 1 or something? And then yeah. they just fucking turned it on and won like a ton in a row. Played great, man. Uh, you, you see that from time to time. You, you'll see a team that, that uh, finishes in the eighth spot, especially in the NHL, uh, make a big run. You don't usually yep. see it in the NBA like happened uh, with the Heat last year, where, what were they, seventh and they ended up in the play in? Uh, oh, they, they ended lose up the first game. game. Remember, eighth? they exactly. Yeah. Well, because they lost the seventh play in game. Yep. Yeah. Right, right, but uh, they they still, I mean, it, you you weren't expecting them to make this run into the finals, and that rarely happens in the National Basketball Association. Much more likely to occur in hockey, where a goaltender can make all the difference in the world. So, so this is the last thing you want, is for your goaltenders not to be able to identify the big E at the top of the I chart. Well, when uh, you're rolling around in April there and uh, thinking, wow, what, what a hell of a season. That, that would be a shame if this team uh, kind of dissipated uh, its intensity and fell apart a little bit. Because uh, they, they certainly gave you reason to believe that they were legitimate Stanley Cup contenders. Uh, do, do we believe that they can win the Stanley Cup as we speak right now, Mike Luby Lubitz, after watching that uh, collapse against the Canadians last night? I don't know. I, I look it, again, like Reno said yesterday. It sometimes it's going to get smacked in the face. Okay, but when do you wake up and and shake it off and come back stronger? Like last night to me would have been the night. It's like okay, you fucked around, but you, at least it was worth. Versus good teams with top tier talent playing a shit team in the Canadians. Let's fucking go. Cause you've seen them kill these teams. Like they yes. rule teams like this all year long to go and lose like that. It's, it's like, okay. So remember I, it's been since they made that, fu- I can't remember the trade, but remember they made the trade. What was it for Tarashenko or whatever the fuck the guy's name is. Oh yeah. And that's what's weird. Moves like that are great because we were proud that they're going for it. But sometimes moves like that fuck shit up. So it sort of feels like they're on shaky ground since then. I, look, Maurice did a hell of a job last year wrangling them together. I'm not going to count them out, obviously. I think they are a top three or four team in the sport, but they're not the overwhelming favorite anymore. No. Like, just not. I mean, with what you're seeing out West with the, the Canucks, with the Avalanche. See, see I've seen zero uh, Vancouver Canuck hockey this year. this year. I don't even know if I've seen a highlight of the Canucks. <laughs> Is Pavel Burry back with them? I, I'm not sure. I don't know who's on there. Who the hell do they have? I, I I couldn't tell you anything about them. Nothing. Zero. So it, it's hard to really, uh, you know, be analytical about it. But And I've seen very little of the Colorado Avalanche. We used to know that team pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had reason to kind of pay attention to them. And they had the big rivalry going with the Detroit Red Wings, which was played up uh, with the national networks. Whenever the league got national exposure, it was always Avalanche Red Wings at that time. And they would drop the puck before it even hit the ice. They, they, they would be in a wild scrum. Which was great. But, uh, yeah, I couldn't tell you much about their team. Well, what, McKinnon? Uh, Reno was great on that yesterday. Great. He, he named off great. a couple of Avalanche players. Well, they won, the, they won the cup two years ago. Remember, it was them and the Panthers going back and forth. The Panthers struggled, and they were fucking amazing, even through the playoffs. They didn't fall off last year. They just weren't as good last year, and they have rebounded this year. And then, look, with the Rangers, the Bruins, the Hurricanes – the East is just in the lightning star lingering. They always have the heat. The they never discount them. Yes. It's, it's doesn't look the way it looked like three weeks ago where you're like, Holy crap, this team is just. I, I thought they had to. Right yeah. I mean, I thought they were, you know, definitely destined to make uh, a deep run, at least like Eastern conference final, something like that. We'll see. Should yeah, be a lot of fun. Anyway, that's why this is a great time of the year. And of course uh, we have the NCAA tournament games uh, and now, a little double dose of it because I I don't think you can help but pay a little attention to the women's side now after uh, all of the fanfare, 12 and a half million people tune in to watch that uh, Iowa LSU game. Uh, The professor was brilliant in his analysis on that game. And and I I don't know that this is particularly flattering. The terminology used that uh, when the coach Lisa Bluter brought in the fat chick, as he put it, (laughs) they allowed her to hack the shit like she was a transgender Rick Mahorn. Mm. Hacked the shit out of Angel Reese, who eventually uh, sustained an injury and uh, re- really wasn't uh, that dominant of a factor uh, from Second that point on. She was barely involved. Yeah. And it seems like the, <laughs> the Zoftic woman did her job. Th- there was, there was an agenda. It, it did appear. And uh, this Lisa Bluter doesn't get a lot of attention. In fact, I had to look up her name this morning. 
I never heard. They kept going to Mulkey. I'm like, okay, there's the lunatic. And yes. then I'm like, who's this other woman they keep showing? <laughs> I'm like, why do they keep Mulkey, showing? Mulkey, uh, <laughs> she does remind me of like uh, the old school wrestling manager. She's like a Wild Red Berry there on the uh, sidelines. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> but you I, wouldn't remember Wild Red Berry. I he managed that. the uh, Fable Tag Team, one of the greatest tag teams in the history of professional wrestling, the fabulous Kangaroos. And uh, Barry was a particularly menacing presence whenever the Kangaroos were going against Skull Murphy and Brute Bernard, another fable tag team combination that uh, was at the very top, at the very height of professional wrestling back in the days of uh, not McMahon Jr., but the, the original McMahon, Jim McMahon. Not Jim McMahon. <laughs> it was it Ed McMahon. <laughs> Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon. Hey, babe. All right. Uh, we're going to bring on Tony Segreto for a little old school. Uh, we're going to take a, a quick time out there, but uh, you get a look at the handsome Tony Segreto, extremely distinguished uh, broadcaster and, of course, Hall of Fame stature uh, here in uh, not only in town, but in our hearts as well. Uh, yes. Let's get a quick hello here with Tony and then uh, we'll get into some old school. How are you, Tony? How are you feeling, bud? I'm fine and dandy and... Uh... I can't wait to get into Little Women's Basketball week. I don't know if you would have been proud or disgusted that yesterday's conversation, and I actually thought about it in the middle of it, was Ken, our friend that literally has mocked this sport, e for myself, the three of us who have openly mocked women's basketball for a couple years now, uh, dissecting it le legitimately. I was. It was like, like we were Hubie Brown talking about the Knicks. Like, it really was just, something. It's something they should be proud of or be like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Tony, you've won. You've won over our hearts. <laughs> we capitulate to you today. We'll, we'll, we'll spend the entire time uh, analyzing the <laughs> final four. But uh, there was a hatchet job done there uh, by the referees uh, on Angel Reese. I, I would agree with that. And I don't know who the fat chick was that the professor was referencing, but uh, she came in. And when she came into the game, her, her whole mission was to just make sure that Reese did not leave there without needing the assistance of a wheelchair. And, and they let a lot of that go. But um, nonetheless, great performance by your girl, Caitlin Clark. And uh, yes. it's interesting to us. We were talking about it, Tony. Interesting to us that the number one team, the undefeated team, is getting zero mention yeah. prior to the uh, Final Four. In fact, you wouldn't even know that they were playing or who they were playing. They're playing North Carolina State, too, is uh, another Cinderella story there. Remind, it's a lot like UConn. How often yeah. do, because UConn won by 50, people have to talk about them. But who does it? No one mentions a, a player on UConn. Yeah, they're the best team by far. But the story is Burns Jr. and Edie. Yes, like those yeah. are the stories. I mean, that anyone's talking about. Pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, the eventual winners are not even being discussed, or the potential eventual winners. All right, we're going to come back with Tony Segreto, a little old school. Brought to you by Texas Roadhouse Restaurants in a moment. Now that the time, it's eight twenty-four. Tony Segreto here. Let me ask you a question. What do you look for when you go out to eat? Good food, obviously, friendly atmosphere, not too loud, but good energy, reasonable prices, and a place where you feel comfortable. All those ingredients, <laughs> no pun meant there, are hard to find unless you're talking about the Texas Roadhouse. You see, they encompass all of those attributes, really, really good food, amazing atmosphere, good for a family, good for a date, or just a night out for yourself, and prices that will make you extremely happy. Their ribs unmatched, steaks hand cut every day. Everything, and I mean everything, is made on site, including their incredible bread. It's the one day, folks, that you can forget about low-carb diets. Trust me when I tell you, Texas Roadhouse, your restaurant, your destination, when you say, where should we go and eat tonight? From the newly renovated sports bar to the beautiful bayside views captured at the Tiki Bar, Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill has it all. Located at mile marker 104, the Big Chill also offers waterfront dining, while experiencing breathtaking sunset views of the Florida Keys. It's simply the hottest spot in the Keys to cool off. That's Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill at mile marker 104 in Key Largo. For more information, call today at 305-453-9066. What we gonna do right here is go back, way back, back into time. We are now kicking it old school with the one and only Tony Segreto, brought to you by Texas Roadhouse, all right, uh, once again, we demonstrated our ignorance yesterday, uh, Mike Luby Lubitz. Welcome back to the show. I, I just I had to look this up because I wasn't sure exactly, uh, you know, what, what the thing was. 12, I mean, it 12, doesn't sound. 12 what's that? 
three million viewers. Okay, twelve point three. Point three million viewers. No, I, that wasn't what I was looking up. I, I, I was looking up uh, "dirty debutante." I didn't realize uh, the connotations here. That that it actually is like a, a series of porn videos. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> so, so <laughs> that would be. I mean, so highly inflammatory that you can't imagine. But what happened to the uh, editorial, uh, you know, department there? The uh, the editors at the LA Times, uh, Tony. Can you imagine that uh, slipping through? Like, and I, okay, like, let me ask you because, like, uh, you I mean, guys—that's would, what it is, which uh, appears, uh, you know, that—that's the reference. Would write your own copy in TV, right? Like, I don't know if it, once you become like a great, they're probably not micromanaging you, but because Defo was like, "This is the guy still have a job," and I'm like, "But again, he worked in the newspaper business. I haven't." If you write the story, someone's there's got to be an editor, especially it was front page. There's got to be an editor. They somewhere. let it through. So then, it, is it then? Oh, oh my God! Ben, how can you blame Ben? <coughs> to let it through. Like that's to me not the, the writer's fault. That's the editor's fault for, for not stopping it. What was the what was the lead? The the dirty debutants. He called her. He was calling LSU, doing the whole thing that everyone's been doing, which yeah. is what Angel Reese was bitching about. Good versus um, evil. Then the dirty, like again, it's it's very reminiscent of Imus, the the dirty debutantes. It's actually more inflammatory than uh, Imus if you really look at it's it. Worse, I didn't know it was a porn uh, title. Yeah, I mean the yeah. nappy headed host thing well, was one thing. Uh, you know, it, it, it was you know certainly inappropriate. But uh, this, I mean, uh, Kim Monkey had every reason to be appalled by this, and uh, it, it's amazing. How, how does this guy? They fabled uh, question, Tony. How does he keep his job? How, how does a guy keep his job after uh, throwing a reference like that about a college women's basketball team? I, you know, the the guy should be thrown out of the LA Times. Interesting. Plain and simple. You okay. know, this 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 um, this feeling that the women, you know, I just it just beyond me that we can think that way still. You know, these women are hard working players who are athletes, some of whom, you know, how many times the player, they, they go to that, they go to that shot that they Caitlin made at her, at her home, at her home uh, court from, from uh, the shot that set the record. Oh, the logo. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they marked it forever. And now all these people go, including the men, and they can't make it. So I, I don't know. I, you know, it just, it bothers me. It bothers me because of my, my daughter. It bothers me because of my wife. It bothers me because of women all over the country, all over the world. You know, they, they work hard and they deserve, they, they deserve the accolades and they deserve, deserve to get the credit and deserve to get the criticism when they deserve it. But not, not that. It was probably a little over the top. I mean, maybe you could have made a better choice there. Right? Little, I, I didn't understand it. I was thinking, you know, th these were the, uh, you know, th these were the debutants that were being introduced that were no longer virgins. Uh, even that is insulting. Uh, you know, if you're gonna, and and I think you always have to keep this in mind. Although it's not true anymore, uh, Tony, where you're talking about 19 and 20 year old kids. Because what about this guy? Well, what is the story there? How, how's this guy McCormick coming back for his ninth year of college football? Uh, that Tony, is, you're on a board of directors uh, here at the like University there. of Miami. That's I mean, what the fuck? That's ridiculous. How does <laughs> that happen? How does that happen? That's a, it, that, that it seems I, like something you would never want to have happen because no. I mean, you're categorizing people. Uh, it's almost like having a weight class in boxing. I mean, uh, college sports were meant for people that were you know somewhere in yeah. the neighborhood of uh, 18 to 22 years old. So, yeah. This Why guy, are you allowing uh, grown men to to come in and play this sport? I mean, outside of Chris Winky, I don't know how he was at FSU when he was forty, but uh, <laughs> but he hadn't been in school, right? I mean, he had taken a hiatus to play pro baseball, so uh, he had eligibility left. But this guy's been played. in school for nine nine years, Tony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, how is everybody this morning? On this we're good. We are great, exciting. Be better. Yeah, we're, we're excited. Well, you, you turned us into women's basketball fans. We'll, we'll watch these games. I watched uh, the second okay. half. I, I got into it. We literally spent like 20 minutes talking about it yesterday. So, yeah. Wow. That means it's turn that's that's unheard of. On this show. That's <laughs> well, I mean, you can't help but admire this uh, Caitlin Clark. I mean, she, she, she's a, uh, just a good ball player, period, right? whether it was men's or, or women's. I wouldn't want a player. We were talking about it yesterday. Would you want to match up with her one on one for money at no. the park? I don't think so. She, no, she can, you know, do a lot of different things. Uh, she, she, 
She has the game, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the moves that, and instinct she has, plus a dead eye shooter from 30 feet, which is, uh, you know, hard to find. Somebody that is that adept at long range. Uh, she has kind of a weird, uh, you know, shot there. Uh, she you know, she, the yeah, it looks a little bit like Reggie Miller, you know, like like a, just a strange launch on the shot. But uh, the trajectory to spin, I mean, uh, it's as perfect as it can get. And, and she and, reads she reads the, the court so well. Yes, she yes. Is she's great. She 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 just knows. She she feeds she feeds the the other players. She's a cheerleader. She and and she does it in a in a way that doesn't get too high or too low. She, she's she's got it. I, you know, I admire her. I admire her. If she played uh, in any other sport, she would excel in that too. Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, she, uh, you know, certainly shows uh, athleticism. Uh, her drives to the basket, and when she's uh, leading a break, I mean, she she really does have uh, an aptitude for the game that uh, far exceeds what you normally see. I, I'll put it this way: I don't know, don't mean to be disparaging about it, but uh, you you don't usually see this level of instinct, uh, e even from most players in the men's game, much less uh, in the women's game. So, uh, yeah, now she we'll definitely see uh, stands out. Now we'll see if she can. Uh, she can get to the finals because that's that's the key for her. Well, she's but, getting to the finals. I mean, the, the whistles. <laughs> uh, did you see this? Were you, well, was there any doubt that Iowa was going to win that game over LSU, uh, <laughs> even when the score no, was no, close? No, 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 no. But but I mean, you know, the final <laughs> final. You know how much yeah. money's at stake here, Tony. You think Angel Reese was going to put as many eyeballs on TV as uh, they're going to get for the semifinal oh, game that doesn't even involve the top team? Now, now, now uh, since you follow this stuff, Tony. What are the odds that South Carolina doesn't just win it all anyway? That's the funny thing is I still think they beat the shit. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, is there a big gap there? I mean, they, they haven't lost a game all year. I know they, they were challenged maybe a couple of times, but it seemed like very rarely South Carolina. I, you know, I don't know. I, I I can tell you this, that if Caitlin Clark makes it to the finals, if she makes it to the finals, that they're going to be playing – before the largest crowd ever, and that um, it's going to be a whale of a game because I, I I think the South Carolina, as good as they are, may may reach their their watershed right there. Mm. All right, that, that's just what I think. That that's just the way I see it. You know, if uh, if Caitlin Clark gets beat by UConn, then the, then. <laughs> How, how can they overlook Geno, though? I mean, that game is only a two and a half point line, by the way. No. I, and, and as Paige Beckers was, was Caitlin Clark before Caitlin Clark was uh, on the scene. And, uh, Paige Beckers was playing some, some really good basketball. But, you know. <laughs> Listen you to us. We're, we're giving you, you shit about uh, your predictions here because uh, based you, on our knowledge of women's basketball. You kind of coach. <laughs> what, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, Ariyama? Ari oh, yeah. Ariyama, yeah. One of my favorites. Can't stand the man. Well, no, he's an ass. But <laughs> he's, an ass. he's a little pompous, would you say? Uh, he's a little pompous, my God. Yeah. He he wrote pompous. He You look up pompous, he's there. Yes. <laughs> In the dictionary. <laughs> my God. He's no, a, he, uh, you know, he, he, he's, he's shown himself to be, uh, you know, a, a guy that uh, is a little bit hard to embrace uh, with uh, the egomaniacal, uh, insufferable way that he approaches everything and every press conference. But uh, <laughs> He deserves Well, I mean, his, his problem was, uh, you know, and this is uh, my guy, Phil Mushnick in the post. Uh, I mean, uh, he, he couldn't, he loves uh, Ariama references because uh, Paige Beckers, when she uh, hurt her ankle a couple of years ago, I guess it was, was it two years ago? Yeah. She, she's in a game with like a minute and change to go that the uh, UConn uh, Huskies, uh, women Huskies, were winning by 40 points. And, and he's one of those guys that will leave his starters in the ball game even when they're up like 100 to 32 uh, over uh, Holy Trinity. So, you know, that, that was something that uh, people found uh, to be a little bit disturbing about Gino. Never mind what he said. I mean, But you can't denounce his accomplishment. I mean, 23 oh, times to the final four in this sport. Yeah, it's insane. More than you know, anybody, I would imagine, by far. Yeah, but yeah, he he doesn't recruit anymore. He just he's he just selects. Yeah, he's been doing that. Well, I've been doing that for a long time. That that that, that program has been there though. I mean, they were ahead of their time in terms of embracing oh, women. Yeah, they were. They yes. were. Basketball. He had to be a nice guy somewhere down the line. I don't but, know about that, but I mean, he was effective. 
But I, I remember doing uh, – UConn had a really good team. When, when I was uh, a couple of years with Sonny there on the road calling uh, UM uh, men's basketball, uh, I remember going to the Gampel Pavilion uh, one year, and, uh, I mean, UConn had an excellent team. I want to say they had Rick Hamilton on the team. Yeah, Rick Hamilton. And they might have had – was Kevin Ali on that same team? Uh, they, they had yes. Joran Sheffer, yes. who was yes. a good player out of Israel. Uh, <laughs> might have even had Daniel Marshall. Yeah. And – and yet, the women's game was just as explosive in terms of uh, the crowd's reaction, uh, and that preceded the men's game that night. It was like one of those things that you know you, you didn't want to miss. It used to be like the junior varsity game uh, yeah. when they had freshman separate right. teams. Yeah, it was like the freshman team would play before the varsity. Uh, but then they, I guess, they started playing a women's game prior to the uh, the men's games, and that, there was, I mean, it was amazing the enthusiasm for this women's game. Oh, yeah. going way back. I mean, this is early '90s, Tony. So, so they were onto it for a long time, and you know, part of that uh, whole big battle with Pat Summit in Tennessee that was always a lot of fun. Although uh, Gina was particularly disparaging about one of the uh, great coaches, and she must have hated him like poison. Oh no, they hated each other. They just, they just, they hated each other. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah, he's still in there. I mean, very live and with a shot. Now, now, are, are you infatuated uh, like we are with this DJ Burns guy? The, who, who, who's going to look like uh, Danny yes. DeVito in there. The NC State big guy. The NC yeah. State big guy. NC State, uh, you NC know, this State. guy is very enjoyable to watch. Yeah. I, I love this kind of player. I love this guy. I, I love yeah. the player. I, I love the person. The person is just as, just as good as a player is. And, okay. Uh, did you see the profile on him? He's, he's exceptional. Seems like a very likable, and embraceable fellow. Great he, time. He, like, he's he like is. A, and blast like I and, love and, and I hope they make it. I hope they make it to the finals. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I think they might. You know, uh, this is where uh, Cinderella the story starts to uh, turn yeah. and unravel I think a little in bit. A, a other direction here, but I, I mean, I, I would root for him. But uh, this Please. Zach Eady is not a total putz. I mean, uh, I, he no. would be capable. I would think of negating yep. the effectiveness of a DJ Burns on the inside. Uh, you know, he, he towers over him. Uh, he's got uh, what you're talking seven inches height yes, uh, and height inches. advantage. Yes, and, and he's got long ass arms, and his footwork isn't so bad that I, I think he's going to be abused by DJ Burns on the inside. I, I think Burns is in for a tough night against Zach Eden. I, I don't know. If I that's think just he the is too. But 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 you know, stranger things have happened. And uh, he may have something that, that we don't know about. And uh, uh, I can't wait to see it. What, what games are Saturday and Sunday or sa Saturday? Uh, they go Saturday. 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 Well, no, you got the Men's women's on Friday. Men's women's Saturday. Friday. Yeah. Then, so you uh, get to catch it all, Tony. Uh, and, and I would think, uh, you know, you would imagine that the, well, Friday night maybe not as conducive to drawing the uh, size audience that they had for the Monday night game. And, and that was highly hyped. And then you had all of this national attention that was coming away of the game. Even if people weren't interested, uh, once this guy uh, Bolch wrote, wrote that they were the dirty debutantes, that that I, I I did not realize that until I just punched it up, Tony. How insulting that really was! I, you know, I, I thought I it was just a multi it. milk in the moment, but it wasn't. Yeah, I can't believe it. I, I that that just that just makes me mad. It's just funny because it's not like Kalen Clark doesn't play a physical braggadocious. Uh, I guess masculine, which is that is sexist to say that women can't play. Like it, it's not a man or a woman's way of playing. It's just basketball. Like whenever women do anything a little bit rough and tumble, uh oh, that dirty them is like, what? what are you talking about? Yeah, like that's so weird. It's not like LSU is any more rough than I'm sure South Carolina. The way Don Staley coaches is a physical fucking team. Like I haven't watched them, but the way that she is very. Anal retentive, very focused, doesn't take any crap from anyone. There's no way you go under. They they had one struggle against Indiana, but every other game has been won by double digits. The first game, they won by almost 60. The second game, they won by 40. Like, you're not winning like that by playing cute and cuddly basketball. Like, but for some reason, LSU, and Mulkey's a, a jackass. She is. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that you put it on, like, the players. Let them play if it's good. Like, it, it was actually fun to watch until Reese was totally taken out of the game. Like, they were going back and forth, and it was – look, and I don't watch a lot of women's because it doesn't ever really feel like that. It, it feels, whenever I watch, a little bit more genteel, but good for them for getting down in the dirty, but that doesn't – you don't judge them. For, like, Have it was you just, watched any basketball lately? 
I watched that game. I watched. Yeah, I watched that game. I watched. Well, yeah, how can you say that? The Whenever I turn it on, it, it bores the living crap out of me. Like it's just, it's, it's fucking. There aren't a lot of brick layups there, Tony. You would have to. Admit. Whenever I turn it on, it's very. I don't know. It's very. Again, it reminds me of like 1960s basketball. Like it's very fundamental, and that's great. There's not a lot of athleticism, and there wasn't even in that game. But at least there was a lot more physicality. A lot of time when I watch it, they're not getting into it, and that's fine. I'm not judging them for it. It just is not the game that touches tickles my fancy that game was that game they were getting and maybe this tournament they've done it i just haven't watched it but that game it was like okay i've been wrong because they were getting after it where it wasn't women or men's basketball it was just fucking basketball and i was impressed by it i enjoyed it and then you go and write that it's like okay dude like what are you talking about like get the fuck out of the you have a convert Tony, <laughs> I always you know, say if you just reach not one not child, yet. Yeah, not, yet. not <laughs> yet, not yet, he's, he's, he's save turning. him from himself. He's turning the coin just a little bit, just a yeah. little bit. Yeah. How are you doing, Tony Segreto? You all right? I mean, uh, I'm fine. Yeah. What's happening? Uh, what, what are you doing? Are you interviewing any dignitaries? You got uh, more UM stuff going on? Nope. There's nothing on the docket today. Nothing on the docket this week. All right. Um, it's my birthday next week. Next one. Oh, wow. Thursday. Next Wednesday. Oh, wow. Wednesday. Okay, okay. We'll have to figure out a way to celebrate that. Uh, certainly yeah, at the I'll racetrack on Friday, Friday. we'll uh, light up a, a candle and a cupcake or something to uh, celebrate your birthday, uh, Tony, which is uh, fantastic. Um, uh, all right. Um, are you following uh, the local teams and all? I mean, we, we saw the Panthers. I have uh, not seen. Again. I, have, I, hate, <clears throat> I hate to say this. Yeah. I have not seen what the Marlins have done. I mean, well, they haven't done anything. They're zero and six, my friend. I don't think you missed anything. <laughs> They've blown every fucking game. That's all like, you I need to know. Could, I've watched the games and still not seen the Marlins do anything. We we we, uh, we have the under. Oh, that was our big bet. Oh, we had what we thought was inside information. A guy told me, uh, you know, that that I have tremendous respect for, and, and he would be among the least likely to ever say anything negative about the Marlins and their chances. Uh, at least in my opinion. And he told me, bet the under this year, they're going to suck. And uh, and then he was right. <laughs> yeah. They just flat out suck so far. I mean, 0-6. Oh, and six, it, it, oh, and we, six, we can't yeah. go to the window and cash the ticket yet, but uh, they have to play above 500 the rest of the way with a team that started like this, like a bunch of schleppers. And they haven't so, they played the Yankees and the Dodgers. They they're playing played low-level teams, Pirates, right? Pittsburgh and the Angels. Defoe also liked... Yeah, because the Paulie man's friend liked, and he's been right so far. They're five and zero, oh. but coming into the year, the Pirates weren't anything serious. I can't even name uh, McCutcheon's still playing. I, he's like yes. sixty eight, but the rest of that team, I don't, I couldn't name anyone else on the Pirates, and the Angels are a struggling franchise. Like, so they're zero yeah. six by playing teams they should have been able to win three games against. My God. Angels have a couple of guys. I, I don't know if they uh, they played in all of the games, but they, they had a couple of guys like Rendon and uh, a couple of their other hitters that were. Yet to get a hit this year in the game last night. <laughs> well, you, know, you know what I'm amazed at is that the Otani, uh, the the gambling. Yes. Just it's quiet again. It's quiet again. Swept under the rug. Yeah, it's over. It's quiet Money. again. <laughs> that, is, that is huge management. Of, of the, oh, uh, yeah. Well. You, you talk about getting out in front of the story here. Wow. Which I, it was a conflicting story. I, how could there not be just constant probing questions about this uh, ongoing, oh Tony? My God. It, it, it's it just it reeks of it reeks. Uh, yeah. Here, well, I mean, like I said, uh, we we had a, a friend of ours uh, who told us that that he has heard uh, from Boyer, maybe not directly, but indirectly, the uh, bookie that's involved in this thing, a guy named Matthew Boyer, that uh, it was Otani all along, it was Barzini all along. That uh, this guy may have sent it into the tune of twenty five million dollars, and that he was the guy that was making the bets. So I, I mean, how that hasn't surfaced? If we have heard that, how that hasn't been explored uh, is is beyond comprehension. I mean, how are they not talking directly to this Matthew Boyer guy and saying what the fuck was the real story here? I have heard from a uh, a number of major leaguers that uh, he bets. You would think. I mean, oh really? They have said it like okay. You ever walk by in a pie gal poker in a casino, Tony? <laughs> it's all Japanese. You're amazed. You're thinking, <laughs> the Asian economy must be incredible because every one of these fuckers is betting more money than my net worth right now on a hand of cards. Yeah, can you believe it? And they're your 20 net, deep. Your net worth is the yeah. net worth of Rhode Island. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do you mean? Are you kidding? It's amazing, yeah. So uh, I, that story, though, uh, not getting much attention. I mean, you would think somebody would be all over this. Hey, where, where is the probing reporter that wants to get to the bottom of this? Is there anybody spearheading the movement to actually nobody. get to the truth? No, they're scared. And, and here's the other thing. Otani has yet to speak English. Yes. No, not at all. He's not even trying that to. That bothers me because, you know, I accept everybody. Just we're human beings. But I then like to uh, if I want if I went to Italy or Spain assimilate or, you you feel he should assimilate yeah I, I you know a little bit here a little bit there he he refuses yeah and, and I, I think with something like this though he would have to be extremely careful because, yeah he's not he's not gonna speak well, his first English now yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean you know how it is uh, you, I, I you're, you're listening to a guy who's uh, you know not necessarily a hundred percent fluent in English worst fucking thing right now and. Yeah. And not know he's saying it. Yeah, there's yeah. no. Yeah. But beforehand, you know, there, there was no reason why he couldn't speak a little bit here. I'm sure there. he does. I'm he sure probably does. does. Yeah, I, I does. would think so. Look, yeah. again, Japan, Japan is one of the bigger markets in the world. I presume, like, my wife in the Dominican Republic spoke English growing up at school. I'm sure he knows English. But again, these guys, you're out there. People are run to make memes of you. So I look. I'm not even mad at that. It's it's just interesting that he hasn't talked at all. And when he the one time he talked, he was yes, I did not do it. It was not me. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> walked away. And like I said, dude. Like, yeah. really fuck? <laughs> like <laughs> we'll see what happens on that one, Tony. Anyway, we got to run. Uh, Luby's got an early assignment here with Mike Mayo in the lunchbox. He, he's got to scramble to get to Grandpa's where, where they're going to be uh, doing this thing at like. Is it 10.15 we're signing on here, Louie? 10.15. Like craziest time. Man. Okay, so he's got to run. Uh, Tony, uh, I will see you what, Friday? Friday, sir. Did Most you have the uh, Florida Derby winner or you were all over fierceness? What a what a performance that was. I mean, that was yeah, I, I was blown out of the water. Eye opener, my God. I mean, now, I don't say he didn't beat anything in the Florida Derby, but uh, they were high on a couple of those horses in the field, and it was questionable whether – the performance we saw in his prior three-year-old race, the Hutchison was more indicative of where he was at right now than, than what he did. But uh, literally, uh, under a stranglehold all the way around from Johnny B, this horse uh, marched into the favorite spot for the Kentucky Derby. And uh, it, looks was a, like it was a, it was a tough it was a tough race. I'll tell you that because I I didn't even get a one. <laughs> oh yeah, they, uh, every horse. Yeah, to consider maybe uh, the, I, I don't want to cast aspersions, but uh, that, that Safi Joseph had something cooked up there for uh, <laughs> seven ball of twenty seven. Do, do you think there's a conspiracy for every sport? Every yes, I, I believe that to horse. be true. Obviously. Look who's running sports now, uh, Tony. Yeah, yeah. It's Vandal. <laughs> You don't think that they're looking at Roger Goodell uh, with a little bit of a fish eye saying, hey, Raj, we don't want that Brazil game to be on peak. Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. You tell these TV people to go fuck themselves. We want the 20 million people that aren't going to be able to see it to be betting on this game at halftime. So uh, oh it's only God. a matter of time before everybody capitulates to the demands of the uh, betting you know, public. There's, there's, you can't. You you gotta believe that there's a conspiracy in every game. Okay, yes. right? Any game I've been involved in, there's been some kind of conspiracy. <laughs> Especially if I'm involved monetarily and not physically. Uh Tony, we love you, man. We gotta run uh, for Luby and uh we'll see you Friday. Tony Segreno, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, that's gonna do it uh, for old school Tony Segreno brought to you by Texas Roadhouse Restaurants, uh, Dynamite Place. I mean, we even converted Mayo to like an achievement. Oh, yeah. Well, it's hard not to Mayo. Look, it's it, it has uh, it covers all the bases. It has the consistency of a chain, but it has the feel and quality of a, 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 a homey restaurant. Yeah, uh, you guys, uh, you got to race down there to cra you know grab a bagel and cream cheese uh, at uh, Grandpa's, and uh, nice. they'll have the lunchbox coming up ten fifteen. I'm going to try and check in on that, nice. uh, Louie, from the home base here, and uh, then. We will see you, uh, what, uh, later on? Uh, well, we'll see you tomorrow uh, with the yes, uh, we'll next edition of the Depot Show. Yeah. Get underway around 8 o'clock. Uh, we also have on Caffeine fun, TV. Uh, what was that, uh, Louis? We're having some trivia challenge fun. I think Gert Oh, well, good. Yeah, no, I was enjoying it. All right, so we'll see you next time as we leave you now that. The time. It's 8.50. Let's go to eat a damn snack. Let's go to eat a damn snack.